Ian, welcome to the cave. Thanks. Good to be here. Exciting time for you. Nice little ride. Everybody, you know, can see you uh, on Epics as Fro, man. How would you describe that story right now? That feeling. Mm, that feeling uh, outside of the plot. Yeah, the feeling probably is the 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 despair and looming dystopian tendrils that are kind of wrapping th themselves around all of us, at least emotionally, and then what we do with it. Uh, these people in the story are trapped in a town, but is it an alternate reality or is it a real place? And it's, you know, safe enough during the day, but at night you better lock your doors and close your windows, nail them shut because there are creatures that have no interest in human survival. So the town gets split between, um, kind of bifurcation between those who accept the reality and just say la vie and let's just enjoy what remaining time we have left and those who who are adamant uh that there must be a way out and will do anything and everything possible to get out of this nightmare scenario and and do so by embracing law and order and logic and reason and actively trying to to figure their way out of it. But I, I think it allegorically, to your point, to your question, speaks to what we're all feeling in this time of uh, pandemic and climate yeah. change fear and World War III fear. Uh, so take your pick. It's, it's like you know, <laughs> doomsday scenarios right. everywhere. And then so it's like, how, how do we deal with that? Do we, do, we, do we just melt? Do we buckle? Or do we, uh, or do we um, be the best that we can possibly be in these days? difficult times and that's what I think the the show is examining and looking at from a, a number of different angles yeah. let's jump right into the show because I got, I got to know like when you read the script like I want to know like what was your reaction before you even went for like the audition that uh, yeah. I, I read it uh, in in the winter uh on, while I was on a cabin on a frozen lake and this material just spoke to uh, the time where it was uh, the, the everywhere was in you know locked down and and uh, this just seemed like the appropriate material allegorically to speak to these times and it felt honest to it uh, and 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 I like that there's something about science fiction allegory that's great is it's not direct you can read into it what you like depending on how you perceive the world uh, and then the 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 translation from script to screen was is really good. I think it works. I think it works really well. And it's what it's what I imagined the show would be. And 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 the good news is I think it's it's resonating with people. Um, I hear I hear a lot of good things. Uh, people really getting it and and appreciating it. Yeah. It definitely hooks you right in. I watched when you after I watched the first episode, I was like, oh man, like I can't wait to watch the next one. So like every episode, it makes you. It pulls you in more and more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the idea, right? Right. It better not be a television series if it, if it doesn't do that <laughs> or it won't last very long. Right. Now for uh, Jim Matthews, uh, when you were given the description, how did you decide, like, after you got the audition and you booked the role, like, how did you decide to play this character? I think always the first thing is to find how I connect how what who, who am i in this in this role is always the first point of entry i look for how many similarities i have how much i understand this guy uh what from what assemblage point do i do i approach the role with can i approach him with empathy and understanding uh so i can look at things like I, i'm a father i'm a husband uh I'm American, I'm a man, I work, uh, I build things on some level. So I can connect on all, on, on all those levels. And, and, uh, and then you just look, look at what are, the, what are the differences and how, how different are they? And can I imagine if my circumstances were different? Like there's a family tragedy that we've gone right. through. That is something I have not uh, experience, thankfully. So I have to then put myself in the position and that's, a, that's a big one. That's going to like take someone's, uh, worldview and, and their whole idea of what reality is or, or belief or pessimism about life and, and 
uh, really shake it. So I had to imagine what that would be. And that's an uncomfortable thing for sure. But of course, right. that's what the actor's lot in life is, is to examine those things and try and live them to the best yeah. we can. And it, what's, you know, what's great about the storyline too, is like, you know, you mentioned like you, you're going through, you went through like a hard phase. You're like, you have issues going on with Catalina, your, your, your wife on the show, uh, you know, you have family and now you're trapped in a whole, like in, in a town that you can't get out. So there's a lot of emotions going through your character also. Yeah. You, yeah. That's it. Uh, how to, how to find a way out. And understand that uh, it there's there, there's fear and and uh, uh, not knowing whether or not we will succeed, and then something that that kids bring and and a wife uh, to a degree as well is you you can't show your cracks, to be careful not to reveal the maybe the terror you feel inside uh, and and. Because if the kids see that, then that's a, a failure on, on the father or the mother's part to allow the children to see how dangerous things actually are. So Jim's always trying to keep it together yeah. uh, to focus. And, and to keep it together, he has to focus on the task at hand. And he gets really myopic and really uh, laser focused on, on how to, that becomes his entire mission is how to get out of here right. with everyone intact. What do you love about Jim? And is there anything you would change about him? If you could. Mm. Um, well, I don't know that there's anything I'd change about him because then it'd be wanting something that it isn't. Uh, but what I love about him is he's a family man. Yeah. He's honest and true and authentic and cares immensely about uh, his family and therefore community. And I always appreciate that in men, men who stand up, love their children, love their partners and respect them and have dignity and, and are honest. That's an admirable, admirable quality. And, and of course there's characters, you know, I've played over time that are, are not that. And then you have to appreciate them for what they are. But that's that that's something really nice about this guy is he's he's a straight up, straight up guy. And who doesn't like that? Right, right. Do you, do you think out of all these characters you've played throughout the years, would you say this is your favorite one now? Uh, no. Uh, well, I mean, any I guess I could say any character I'm currently playing is currently my favorite character. Right, right. Uh, but but I, I, I love them all for different reasons. They're all my babies. <laughs> yeah. um, so when the, the viewers are tuning in to watch the first season, what are you like hoping you get on? Have you gotten like any messages from fans about the show? What have they, what have they been telling you? Uh, well, I, I get a lot of comments on, uh, like let's say Instagram, for example, right. and people are like, hey man, I love the show. It's just got me hooked. I'm, I can't wait for the next episode. Um, and, and, and something that's fun with this kind of show is you start to see on different forums. I, I was told there's a Reddit forum on the show already, and it's only a couple of couple episodes in and people kind of uh, hypothesizing about where it's going to go. W what's the nature of the mystery? What is the what is the faraway tree and what does it do? And is it a portal? And is this an actual place in the world or is it an alternate dimension? What are the creatures? Are they real or imaginary? Do they actually kill you? Are we actually dead or alive or whatever? You know, all different kinds of things. And that's fun to see people think about that and guess that. And that's part of the fun of a television series, right? When you can't just, you, you don't get to see the ending right away. You can't just right. watch it in one go. And uh, you just get to keep going on, uh, going on the ride. And, and it seems like people are willing to go on that ride and then keep, you know, guessing what's going to happen where was the shot because you know after i watched the first few episodes i'm like my god this is like it's very like tight and remote from what i can see throughout the show yeah yeah i mean you know it's it's remote except for to everybody who lives in uh beaver bank nova scotia okay it's uh right at home to them uh but it's it's uh it's it's a part of the atlantic side of canada that's a really beautiful 
uh, really gorgeous coastline and lots of forests, lots of lakes and rivers and uh, a lot of really nice people. Like there's a real down home feel to people there. Uh, and I mean that not in a pejorative, but like it really, uh, a lot of, lot, of, lot of simple and hardworking and also intelligent people. Um, I don't even think there's a way I could characterize uh, uh, them. So not to digress, but I, I, I like the place a lot. And, and another thing about it is the weather is amazing it changes it's one of those places where it'll be completely fogged in in the morning and by noon it's sunny and bright out and then a rainstorm will come in the afternoon and be like it'll just dump uh to the to the point where on a ride drive home from set it's like half hour drive back to the city uh, of halifax and i had some drives where i had to put on my emergency lights and wow and i go like 10 or 15 miles an hour or otherwise you just crash because it's raining that that hard how, how long were you on set uh filming this five months wow yeah um may, june to october oh, wow mm -hmm. so you weren't there during the winter times either where it was like probably got cold there <laughs> yeah i wasn't yeah <laughs> so throughout this you know i mentioned earlier you know your wife is played by catalina and you guys are going through a phase like how would you describe that relation between you two well, it's it, it's frayed because we've suffered a, a a loss that is I can only imagine is almost impossible to repair. Uh, how how do you do it? The loss of a child, and so we're we're at a place where we don't know if we can ever come to terms. Mm. So, so the beginning of the of the of the show is we're on a perhaps a last trip. We take an RV road trip and uh, bring our kids. And the idea is maybe we'll just reveal to them at the end of it that we're not going to stay together any longer. Um, but then we get trapped in this place. And the beautiful thing about the writing in this piece is it examines how people behave in extraordinary difficulties and whether or not. As we talked about, you cave uh, and 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 devolve into your worst self, or do you rise to the occasion? And maybe this couple, maybe at least in the first season, maybe they're going to do pretty well together. And uh, in in the face of extreme adversity, uh, actually heal their wounds. Maybe this this disaster actually creates a situation where they can work together as a team and and repair repair uh, the bond that they have all, all four of them with our with our son and our daughter as well how many uh, how many episodes are we expecting for the first season 10, Ten. Right. so hopefully no news yet about a season two because I know like the ratings went up pretty high for this show when it first premiered oh yeah yeah I've heard the same uh, and I, I don't know. I, I, you know, I would think it would be um, silly not to uh, green light it for a season right. two, but that's, that's uh, above my pay grade. <laughs> uh, now, is there any other projects that you got coming up that you can tell the listeners, and the viewers about? Yeah, I, I do uh, a project uh, called Imagine This, which I'm working on getting going again. And every episode, we, we take a community somewhere in the world. And in this instance, it'll be in the United States where they have a problem outside of their control to take care of entirely by themselves. Wow. So we put together a team of inventors, engineers, environmentalists, artists, wow. and we ask the community if we can plan a, 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 a try and a, attempt a solution to that problem. We plan in advance and then one week on the ground together we do it and we film it and i did a pilot in peru for it and it, it turned out really well and now we're working on getting a, a, a season put together of, of this time uh projects in the states and in canada and then we'll go from there wow that's awesome so kind of a, 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 like a, a reality do a documentary hybrid wow is, is like is your plan for like a like a streaming platform or yeah whatever? that's awesome that's right yeah Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Ian, lastly, how can the viewers and listeners find you on social media? Uh, Twitter, I'm on there and I'm on Instagram. Um, I kind of like demarcate the two, like Twitter, I kind of share more political thoughts and then Instagram is more for fun and fans. Hey, uh, Ian, this was great. Uh, thank you for joining me today. 
You're really welcome. Thanks, Elias. Yeah.